Hello, hello everyone and welcome. Of course, before we start, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we live, create and learn on today, paying respects to elders past, present and emerging. Ramesh, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing good, Johanna. How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, still to restream, but every stream we get better. Um, so that's <laughs> all that counts. But um very excited for the stream today. We're doing something a little bit different, but before we get into that, would you like to tell those who haven't caught a stream in a while or those who haven't had the honor of catching one of your streams yet um, a little bit about yourself and I'll, I'll share your screen as well. Sure. Thank you so much for the introduction. So uh, my name is Ramesh and I'm a digital artist from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Um, and before we get started, so what I do uh, for a living, I'm a senior art director uh, in a private company called Mindvilly. Uh, beside that, um, things that I do um, at night, again, uh, this is my passion. Most of the, stuff, uh, most of the time, I will be creating artworks um, based on, uh, again, the theme changes every time. But for now, I'm sticking into uh, creating artworks based on Hindu mythology. Uh, because I and I represent them in a different way just to not a traditional way so that people see it in a different perspective um, and I educating them a lot in terms of like positivity you know I create a lot of affirmations like I think these are things that is important nowadays because people go through a lot of things in life daily so by doing this you know I make them happy in a way uh, this is based on the messages that I'm getting through my direct messages so yeah mm. this is what our I'm doing for a living and for today, and of course, we're going to have like a great time creating stuff uh, using Photoshop. And I don't know, should we get started then? I think so. But just before we do, I will let anywhere, anyone know that's tuning in either on Behance or on YouTube. If you've got any questions for us today, uh, specifically for Ramesh, I mean, got questions for me, feel free to ask. Um, but if you do <laughs> have them, feel free to post them in the chat on either YouTube or Behance and we will do our best to catch them and uh, answer them, I should say. But um, other than that, take it away. Thank you, uh, Johanna. So... For those who know me, you know, when it comes to my artwork, there's always a story behind it. Um, this is just me, you know, creating this story so that when I create my artwork, it will be a very fun journey rather than creating artwork blindly for not doing why am I doing this and all that. So for today, we're going to talk about um, character designing. So we're going to create a character called um, Simon. So who is this Simon? Simon is... Um, it's a son of this famous um, engineer uh, called Robert. Um, so this is an imaginary uh, story, right? There's, there's nothing real about it, but it's always fun to create this, right? Um, so Simon just, you know, at time what happened is that Simon liked to go into uh, his father's room and try to mess things up just to see what he's doing. Um, again, the title of this artwork will be Curious Simon. So one day Simon find out that Robert um, needs some help with his device, but then he's not asking for any help. Uh, probably ego and whatever not. So one day the son managed to find out the device that he has trouble with and he took it away uh, at night and he has his own sweet time trying to figure out if he can help. Uh, well, he did. So this artwork is basically an output of that. So what did he find out and how he looks like and everything. So we're going to find out in this photo manipulation. Um, there you go. I, so what you're looking at right now is the background of my artwork. So I already set, set it up because again, uh, if you look at my previous stream, I already uh, run through things like, you know, how do you create a background? How do you color change mm. something? For example, the background here, uh, as you can see, I, I did label in my layers i say that this is the back of the plant you can see there so how do i change colors using brightness and everything uh the hue and saturation again just to make sure that they all look uh the same uh, when it comes to the mood and i also create the rock over here uh where simon will be lying down and try to figure out the device how can he um uh, like help his dad out so I also have like a color lookup. Again, it's, it's I think one of the big things when it comes to my artwork is that I love using color lookup. It's similar to my, like the Instagram filters just to change mm. the color mood. And we're going to have the character added in into this layer and I also have the right plan and everything. So as you can see, these are all 
um, set up together. Again, the reason why I didn't show you guys because it's more or less the same than how, how I did it in my previous stream. Because today, we're going to mainly focus on the character itself. So let's get started. Um, okay, I'm going to just bring in Simon. So how Simon looks like. Uh, let me just grab it from my file. Again, now me looking at another monitor and try to grab the boy in. There you go. That is, there he is. Simon. Oh, adorable. <laughs> there is Simon. <laughs> so Simon, I what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly position him right on top of the rock. Again, try to lower down the opacity quickly just to see if I put him right at the spot where I want him to be. I think that looks perfect. And of course, the magical tool, when you uh, press on W, you get the select subject. Again, to remove all the white background. So once you select that, AI will calculate and see where the white background is. And then all you have to do is click on the masking. Tara, previously, you know, many years ago, I struggled like you have to clean up the whole background. But of course, thanks mm. to the Sensei in Photoshop, you know, it helps a lot in terms of removing this background so that we can get things done fast rather than, you know, cleaning up all the white background by ourselves. So this is Simon. Um, Simon looks cute over here of course he don't have clothes and whatever not that's the reason why i created this mood board uh why so that you guys get the idea what am i going to create rather than you know just keep sitting there and wondering okay what will ramesh add on so here i created a new layer on top and i will just circle things that i like like for example so this boy Right, this is like a steampunk world. So I want to make sure that he has like a futuristic stuff on him, right? So things that I like about um, my reference images is that I really like the hat. I really mm. like the hat. Again, I did a research. What do you actually call this type of hat? It's called newsboy hat, in case you're wondering. <laughs> there we go. Learn something yes, new already. I was like, <laughs> yes. So I was just wondering, is it a baseball cap? Or, you know, is that a hat? So this like a tons of uh, types of hats so i literally figured it out it's called newsboy hat so we're gonna have that i really like the black jacket that he has here we're gonna have that mm. on simon i'm gonna create this like a band like a i don't know what you call this like a strip like a black strip uh, like an outfit here i think it's made of leather um mm. so we're gonna we're gonna do that as well and i really like um this cloth here like the, the part of the clothes, uh, because I think it's crumpled, you know, it's a bit like dirty. We're going to recreate this particular effect as well. Um, I really like the the goggles, steampunk goggles that this boy have it here. We're going to have that. And when it comes to pants, I think this is super cute. We're going to make sure that we have this on Simon because I don't want him to be uh, too formal as well by having this mm -hmm. pants over here. So I'm going to have that and he's going to have shoes similar to uh, this over here. So I already populate all the stock images so that we don't waste time, you know, trying to find out all the stock images. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly um, merge all together and see uh, how we're going to look like. So this is just the idea, a basic sketch that I did. Um, so this is stuff that we will manipulate into Simon over here and we're going to start changing the color you know so that it fits the mood and everything now obviously your reference images uh, and your mood board are from an entirely different perspective and pose uh, than, than Simon here how how difficult I guess will it will it be to adjust something that is you know a character standing to uh, a character lying down okay so there are a few things that I need to take into consideration, right? Like for example, how much time do I have? Mm -hmm. um, what are the things that I try, try to solve here? So that time is a very uh, important thing. Like knowing that this stream is only two hours, one hour today and one hour Thursday, uh, mm -hmm. by having the person standing, I would need to make sure that I have all the elements left and right, you know, it has the pants and everything. So I need to find a way where I can still show you guys the trick how to add in clothes in a shorter time. So when I show it him in a side way, it's way easier because I don't have oh. to worry so much on the left hand side. <laughs> so yeah, so only, there you go. So that's the reason why I choose this 
position of Simon because it's super easy to impose style and at the same time showing tricks that I always use. I mean, as you guys can see at the back here, all this manipulation was done the same way. How do I add on style? Uh, what are the shortcuts? Uh, what are the tricks that I did way before and how do I change the method now? Because I've learned so much in terms of the trips and tricks and everything, which I'm going to share today. Okay, for now, let's start changing Simon, make sure that he is um, more like blend with the background. So all I got to do is I just duplicate Simon very quickly and I will mask him here. Um, I need to make sure that he looks slightly darker because again, if you look at around the mood, it's, it's, it's actually a sort of like a night mood. So mm -hmm. I need to make sure that he looks slightly darker. So what I'm going to do is from normal up here, I'm going to change to multiply. And as you guys can see, the color is too, um, too contrast, I would say. And it's also the colors are quite uh, bright. In order to change that, all you have to do, go to adjustment and change the black and white of that photo that you just blended so that the color is more muted. Let me show you guys one more time. One, two. So again, I save so much of time you know, darkening it and everything. So that's that. Again, how do I create the colors and the lighting and everything? It's also based on the experience. Um, at the back of my head, I already have the output of how this artwork gonna mm. look like. So I'm going towards it. And if you're wondering, okay, how do I even figure it out? I <laughs> I watch a lot of movies, you know, I, I just observe a lot of things. Like for example, when it comes to like night mode, what are the things need to be highlighted? And what are the things that I shouldn't highlight? so that the focus mm. is there um, and easier for an audience um, to look at it and understand what is the meaning of this artwork. Yeah, because we, we've mentioned in previous streams and I've asked in previous streams, like what is the one thing uh, that you really need to pay attention to to make a photo, photo manipulation uh, look the mm. most real and that is hands down every time uh, lighting. Um, Without good lighting, or not even necessarily good lighting, but without appropriate lighting, maybe is the is the mm -hmm. better word. Then it looks like you've just uh, <laughs> thrown different pieces uh, onto a canvas, and they don't feel connected or seamless, and it looks very mm -hmm. um, CGI, as you might say. Right, right. So yeah, super important. Lightning, shadows. Uh, <laughs> You must know where the light bounces, you know, mm. where do you want the audience to look at? Because it's your role, like a, it's like a movie uh, director, right? There's a message uh, in this movie at the end of the climax. So what is the message? What do I want the audience to understand? So similarly, when it comes to artwork or any artwork or whatever you do in life, there should be a reason behind it. So, and in order to make sure that you have a very realistic looking photo manipulation, Lighting and shadow is number one. Absolutely. I'm just going to make a quick shout out to our pals in the chat. We've got uh, Yeseth and Michael. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Hello. Um, if you or anyone else just tuning in have any questions about uh, what we're doing today, whether it's uh, technique uh, or terminology that we're using, throw your question in the chat and we will do our best to answer it. So what I'm doing right now is that I'm trying to down um, the site of the uh, stock images. Again, reason because uh, at the end of the day, what we're going to look at is that there will be a light sparking out from the hand of this boy called Simon. Mm. So I need to make sure that the rest of the feet and hand and everything else look slightly darker. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. Again, always make sure that when you create a dark uh, portion of your subject, always use soft light, don't use normal because it will create a very fake looking shadow. Okay, let me just show you. Soft light, normal. That sucks. Oh, do not wow. do that. Yeah. <laughs> so always go to soft light. <laughs> so I'm there just manually go. trying to uh, create the lighting. Uh, just to make sure that the light source is here where I'm pointing at my mouse at right now. So everything else should be slightly darker. Um, you can always control the shadow using your flow or opacity. I like to use flow. And again, mm -hmm. I'm just using normal brush size and just rubbing thing at the side here so that everything looks slightly darker before we bring in more um, stock images in. Mm -hmm. 
um, shadow is super a, important. Yeah. Mm, from a functional perspective, what is the difference here between using opacity or, or flow? Okay, good question. So flow is basically, um, I would say it's, okay, opacity is the transparency. Mm. Flow is more like an intensity of that uh, things that you're coloring. It's two different things. So people usually confuse this. So opacity is just a transfer. How much amount do you want the flow to be, the intensity? So mm -hmm. it's two different things. But um, it's super important to know that you don't have to adjust so much of opacity. Just play with the flow and make sure your smoothing is there. So what is smoothing up here? Basically, it's the flow of your uh, cursor. So if mm -hmm. I were to color something, so um, whether I want it smooth or rough, like for example, if I rub like this, so you can see how smooth it goes. Uh, if I reduce the amount of smoothing, it will be crooked. It will be very jagged. Yep. <laughs> um, it's very flowy. I want things to be very flowy, you know, smooth. So I always make sure that my smooth is usually around 30%, 24%, which is just fine. Uh, when it comes to calligraphy and whatever not in Photoshop, you can increase the smoothness so that you have more flowy looking uh, calligraphy. So yeah. Absolutely. I, I think uh, on certain brushes in in, in both fresco and photoshop i i think i might even have the 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 smoothness to like 80 yes. percent but that's just because yeah. i sketch rather quickly um and i uh -huh. know that the control that i have with pen and paper isn't going to be the exact same um as the control that i have using a tablet yep. so the the smoothness and being able to adjust that really really helps yeah Again, it uh, depends on you as well. Like if you know how to control certain things like gadgets, mm. you know, when it comes to like pen and Wacom, whatever not. Um, so it's up to you. If, if your hand is not steady and whatever not, there's always a setting in your Photoshop. Just figure things out, you know. Everything, again, end of the day is, is you are in control. So yeah. So that's cool. Okay, I've colored. Okay, what I'm doing right now is I'm just adding some shadows onto the rock. As you can see, I'm using the rock surface just to add in the some darkness, knowing that you know because he's actually on the uh, stone. Um, there you go. Mm -hmm. So you can see how all this. Okay, I'm gonna undo uh, or hide my layers to see the different stuff that we have added. There you go. Before, after, oh. uh, so that it's more real, right? Rather than having a flat image. Yeah, adds so much more dimensionality to it as well, where you can get, get the indication that no, this isn't. I mean, this is <laughs> this is a human being. Uh, so of course, yeah. the the light will wrap around the object, and and I think I noticed that you zoomed out as well when you were showing the difference. Um, uh -huh. Is it because that that helps you be able to see the the difference in editing like even more clearly? Yeah. So there are many ways to do this. You can either do this or there's also another window that you can open up. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's under window. Which we can, you can add on so that you... Oh, there you go here. It's under workspace, arrange, and then you create a new window. So the reason why it's that is that um, if you tilt it here, at the side, uh, you can actually see a zoom out version of this and then you can start working on the other artwork that you're working on. So it's easier to see. So some people do this so that I can zoom in here, but I don't have to figure out so much uh, on this image. Uh, nice. I do use that sometimes, you know, just to make sure that I don't keep zooming in and zoom out at the same canvas. Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> so it's something that you guys can do. So you just need to uh, float this image. Uh, I'll just close this reference very quickly. And then I will just arrange the window vertically like this, right? So if I zoom in into this, I don't have to worry about that mm. here. Oh, yeah. that's great. So I'm, it's I'm a fun sure things to do. Yeah. Great for managing scale as well, because obviously keeping track of every single different brush size that you use might, might oh, get a yes, little taxing, yes. but being able to see like, okay, here's... Uh, the canvas or the artwork that's always going to be at this size, you can see like, okay, that shadow is massive in comparison to this other shadow. So it's a, it's a great tip. Um, and also, if you're wondering um, how my workspace looks like, is that I always make sure that I have my tool preset at the side. It's something that even Flynn told me that, oh, I need to do this because it saves us so much <laughs> of my time. So that, you know, it's easy to just go in and... Uh, 
pre-select things that's already been set up so that you don't have to find a brush size and go like and then coming back to the canvas again our goal is to create that artwork um as fast as we can because again time is super important something that i always mm. highlight in my streams uh you can never get back the second just fast few seconds ago so do things fast by doing this right have your tool preset here and always make sure your color pick is always here i mean i love using this color spectrum uh color wheel all you have to do is you know there's actually a slide at the top here uh under color there's actually a brightness cube there's also a color wheel that i love to do um i mean the, the way i set up is this way is because again at the end of the day is for me it's super easy to just pick something up and then get things done fast mm. Absolutely. I mean, it's the equivalent of, you know, having assets in in your library. So it's a it's a great tip. We we do have a comment in the chat here, um, which is potentially in. Let's see. Oh, it's in Portuguese. Excellent. Well, Google Translate says that it's in Portuguese. Wow. Now, <laughs> okay. I, I love that we're getting uh, people tuning in from all over the world, but. Um, if, if we can be so bold uh, to say that, uh, let's keep it to English in the chat, uh, just to make it easier for, for moderation as well, and so we can get your questions um, as quickly as possible. Um, that'd be great. But for this one, we have a um, question here. So, um, as a beginner, uh, is there any way for someone to help me make a portfolio? So, let's, let's flip, flip that around a little bit. Um, do you have any tips for making or setting up your portfolio? Okay, so um, not sure if you guys know this. I'm a business student uh, before this, become an artist. How do I manage to get what I want to do is that I use social media a lot. Back then, there's no Instagram, there's no Facebook and all that. Mm. Uh, I have to set up my own website. That, back then, there was like a free website a lot, right? Like hosting website. So I use that. Um, now, in order to create a portfolio, it's already there. How? Social media. Use your mm. Instagram, use your Facebook, use your Twitter. Uh, tons of people will look at you. Again, if you use the right hashtag, um, something that I've been doing for many years now since I discovered Instagram is that Instagram is my portfolio. <laughs> Literally. Mm. You, don't see, you don't see me like my personal life. Yeah, you can see it through my Instagram stories because that's why it's called Instagram stories. I like to tell stories through my Instagram, my personal life. But then when it comes to work itself, it goes, um, I want people to look at my artwork uh, through my Instagram. Um, again, reasons because there's a lot of like uh, audience, um, there's a lot of engagements. Um, I would say use your social media. You don't have to set up anything. Instagram is already there. You have to register. Just know your, um, your mission. Why am I creating this particular social media? Right. Um, I want to show off uh, what are things that I like to do. I like drawing. Again, there's another thing though, uh, which Instagram recently did is that they hide the likes, which is perfect mm. because there are a lot of people who message me saying that, you know, I didn't get as much as uh, exposure as you. Uh, the thing is, they don't know that I struggled back then. Nobody gave me a mm. like, but I didn't stop. Right. Um, never, never let the likes, you know, overrides what you like to do as a passion. I would say just keep posting stuff. Uh, it's okay if there's no likes or whatever. At the end of the day, it's the story of your artwork. Um, see how far you've come. Now, if I look back at my Instagram, like four or six years ago, I was like, oh my God, I didn't... I, I mean, I can't believe I did that. Because again, I don't have experience <laughs> back then, right? But then that doesn't stop me from posting it. I did posting it. I did post it. And then, uh, so if, if I've come so far like this, it's because... I'm okay if this. I'm, I'm okay if there's no likes. I just want to show people I can do this. So yeah, mm. that's great. Um, I'll let you get back to working on this piece, and and I'll just say that um, for the sort of the the actual putting together a portfolio as well, um, I recommend you know put into your portfolio the work that you want to get paid to do. Um, so if you yeah. love doing logos have a portfolio that's full of logos. I think um, starting out, I had the urge to, okay, well, here's every piece of work that I've done that I even remotely like. Um, mm. And that was work from all over the, the place. So it was illustration, it was branding, it was video stuff. Um, if a potential client or employer looked at my portfolio then, they would have no idea 
really what they could hire me for because it was so many different mm -hmm. pieces. Um, now that said, you can have specially designed portfolios for different industries. So you could have a designated uh, branding portfolio that you show to potential branding clients. Um, but just being mindful of, okay, if I'm showing the world the work, that is me telling mm -hmm. them that, hey, this is the work I want you to hire me for. Um, All right. So yeah, just bearing that in mind. And uh, ultimately at the, the end of the day, have fun with it. Um, Cause that's gonna permeate and sing through, through all the work that you do. So if you're having fun at the portfolio stage, that's a good way to start. Absolutely. And now we've got the, was it the paper boy hat? Yes, it's newsboy called the newsboy cat. Newsboy yes. cat. <laughs> so I've had added, <laughs> so I've added it in. Um, so how it works is that, you know, I love lowering down my opacity just to make sure. Again, I know at the, uh, the beginning of this um, stream, we did say that, you know, we're creating photo manipulation. The trick is to make sure that it looks so real that people will question it. Is the newsboy's cap is already there on Simon or did you add it in? So these are the things that you need to um, question yourself um, before you add it in. So that, you know, make sure that you add it so realistically that people will question. So mm -hmm. I lowered it down to make sure the head fits the cap. <laughs> so yeah, like this, you know, once done with that, I can see there's a tip of hair at the top. I am going to just erase that off. So I'm going to look for simon boy here and i'm gonna just erase that up excellent and i suppose you'd when you gather these uh images that you're then using to to build this character knowing uh or having just a sense of scale of the images mm -hmm. themselves could be really really important because if you have a uh i mean if you have like a massive cowboy hat and a little little child could look a little bit off it might be difficult to um to sort of rescale and make it look like oh yeah this this is a kid's hat now um, yeah 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 and i can imagine that that also makes finding images uh a little bit of a challenge because you know you're going from uh clothes or materials that are um, sort of at the scale of an adult body and you're putting it mm -hmm. on a child's body um another thing to to be mindful of yeah so um definitely you know finding the right stock image will take a longer time uh, mm -hmm. there are also times where i couldn't find the right one so what i do is that i will alter it to make sure that you know it fits in form uh, according to what i have in mind so mm -hmm. because altering is so easy anyway in photoshop so yeah fantastic and we are so uh, just approaching a little bit around the halfway mark. Um, tragically, my math is awful, um, but I will let you know um, how we go, how we go with the time. But uh, I think we're making great progress so far, and and also yeah. no no pressure to to finish everything in this stream. We do have uh, part two on Thursday. Yes. So I'm just adding, I just added the cap. Um, again, if you look at my reference earlier, it was a darker cap. What I'm going to do is I am going to make sure that I change the color of the cap. So I'm going to just add in the hue and saturation right on top here. And I am going to lower down the saturation uh, and also the brightness of that cap. I am going to reduce it slightly. There you go. Because if your rim is coming from, from the front, not so much, we're going to also color it to make sure that the color fits yeah. uh, exactly to our stench normal to overlay. And I'm going to color the back of the head. Perfect. Fantastic. Cool. And, and just a reminder again, though, if anyone in the chat, uh, whether that's on YouTube or Behance, uh, have any questions about uh, what we're doing, uh, any tools that we're using, feel free to post your question in the chat and we will do our best to answer it. And of course, if there are any questions that we don't have time for, we will save them for part two. 
Oops, I don't have a hat. We will just make sure that it's slightly brighter in the front. So I'm gonna just erase the masking of the brightness so that we get the light. Perfect. Again, it's super important to add all this so that you know we get a realistic looking uh, lighting. So let me just, mm. again, whatever edits that I've done a few minutes ago, I'm gonna just turn it off to show you guys how far we have come within a few seconds. So this is uh, the bare one, and then we're going to add the brightness. Mm -hmm. We changed the color hue to make sure that it looks slightly darker. And I'm adding in the shadow at the back of the um, cap so that it looks more realistic. Again, knowing that the light source is coming from the front. Oh, that's cool. Um, perfect. Now we're going to add in... Uh, Let's open up our mood board to show you guys what we're going to add in after this. So again, now I'm going to add in the uh, the goggle. So I let me create a new, uh, the steampunk goggles. So. And uh, this, I guess this aesthetic is quite different, um, at least from the work from you that I've seen before. What inspired you to go the, the ste steampunk route? Oh, I always love uh, steampunk theme. Reason is because I think it's very, uh, it's not normal. Like it's not formal. You know, it's like yeah. you, you. It's similar. It's similar to photo manipulation. You cut things up, uh, mm. then you paste it over. Similarly to steampunk, is that you will have a leather jacket and suddenly you have some device at the side of your jacket. I think it's super cool. Uh, again, I love movies. As you guys can see, I have an Avengers poster there. I'm a crazy superhero fan <laughs> so i always like all this you know costumes i like to recreate stuff which is not originally there so yeah so select subject. speaking of uh, movies um have you seen any good ones lately um what did i watch oh my god i watched tons of movies uh what movie did i watch <laughs> recently there is uh oh boy now that you ask, I'm I'm totally oh yes, Doctor Strange. <laughs> ah, multiverse. The of multiverse. Madness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. One of my favorite. Excellent. Oh my god. I haven't had the pleasure of watching it yet. Um, but okay, I'm very very you should. excited too. <laughs> All the special list. effects, you know, is crazy. Mm. It's super cool. No, for sure. So for sure. I. Um, I added the uh, goggles already. I am trying erasing the strap because we're gonna create the strap ourselves. We don't need uh -huh. the, the 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 strap that they have originally. So mm. I'm just erasing the um, all the side uh, of the goggles because there's like a white lines which I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Again, add it as much as you yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I was wondering if you were going to sort of stretch it out uh, or something like that, but it makes sense just to to recreate your own um, from scratch. Yep. And there's a lot of stuff can be reused in photo manipulation. That's the beauty of it. Like, for example, mm -hmm. if you look at the baseball, uh, sorry, it's a newsboy cap, right? It's made of leather. Mm -hmm. And the strap mm -hmm. that I'm going to create is also a leather. So I like to reuse stuff. What I'm going to do now is, okay, this is super important. I love to do this. All you have to do in order to create a shape in your photo manipulation, always use your, again, depends on you. Maybe you have other ways. I love to use the polygonal lasso. This one. Mm. This to create shape and then add things up. Okay, now what I did was right below the goggles, I already create a new layer where I am going to create that particular strap. A shape of it they go like that and I am going to do this and this and now I'm going to color it uh, it can be any color I'll choose uh, black for now mm -hmm. there you go like that and I'm gonna just mask it and make sure that I erase this part of the ears because it has to go at the back of the ears not front <laughs> like this and then I'm going to just mask it and then if you're wondering, well, Ramesh is black in color. You said that it's supposed to be in leather. Well, this is the beauty of it. So can you go back to your cap layer? Go back to the layer where you can spot the um, uh, the, the cap itself. Uh, highlight it like this. Copy, merge. Deselect it. Go back to the strap that you just did. Paste it on top. And then mask it. 
and then voila, you already have the strap. There you go. <laughs> That's really, really cool, and a lot easier than I than I thought it was going to be. That's fantastic. <laughs> yes, I don't really have a traditional way of getting things done. This is what I do. I mm. always discover things as I go on. Like, okay, mm. maybe I should do this. You know, there's never, there's never a one way to get things done in Photoshop. There's always a, a a way, a shorter way. Yeah. Mm. Now we have a, a comment here on YouTube from McWaffles. Um, Photoshop is so cool. And uh, yes. I mean, this example alone, I, I couldn't agree more. It is very, very cool. <laughs> and then I am going to just color it slightly, you know, again, realistic as possible. I'm going to just gonna color it right on top here. There you go like And this. I will say now we have about 20 minutes left. Um, Perfect. For this stream today. So, so if we, um, it. oh, you go, I interrupted you. No, no worries at all. <laughs> so I don't know what you call this exactly. I think earlier the, uh, of the stream, this, this particular, mm. uh, we call bandage or what do you call this? Like, uh, things I that's in between you. It might be called a bracer, potentially. Oh yeah, I, maybe. I know yeah, Michael. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, bracer. Uh, Michael in the chat will definitely know. Um, not sure if he's still tuning in, but uh, my hunch says that it's called a bracer. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, we're going to create that now. And also, okay, now, how do I create this uh, in my photo manipulation, like maybe mm -hmm. six years ago, is that I will import an image. <laughs> so again, I... Again, there are many ways to get this uh, uh, done, right? Like, for example, what I do is that I will grab this part of the uh -huh. jacket and then I would um, just copy it, you know, I'll just copy it this and then I'll just paste it there and then I'll struggle in terms of like, how am I going to wrap this around the hand? It will take three hours back then. Oh, <laughs> but no. now, I, uh, yeah, I'm going to use the exact same way how I did the strap for the goggles. I mm. am going to zoom in like this. Again, back of my head, I already have the patterns and everything, right? So it has to be around the hand. So I am going to just create the shape using the polygonal lasso. Slowly, like this, around his arm. Just the shape of it. And then, there you go, like that. And I'm going to just quickly fill it up with a color that I want. For now, just black because I'm going to fill it up with the leather jacket. So that it looks like there a, we a go. race. race thing. Yeah, whatever you call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I am going to just drag this image in here. Oops. Uh, let me undo that. Okay. Just grab this image, add it in. Very cool. I am going to just increase this so that you guys can have a look at what am I going to import in. So I'm going to just move this jacket over here. I really like this part of the hand. I'm going to just highlight it like this. And then make sure I select the part that I want, which is should be that. And I'm going to just copy it deselect that and paste it right on top of that thing and mask it and now if i move things around <gasps> there you go i already have that there you go and then i imagine you just use you know sh shadow and highlight to make it look like it's yes wrapped around. <laughs> yes i'm learning <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna just do that very quickly Again, always use your warp tool if you want to. There you go. And we've got uh, Gareth in the chat also letting us know that yes, it is a bracer and it's called a gauntlet if it has a glove component to it. So yeah. Ah, like like the Avengers guy. Thanks. Exactly. Well yeah, the um yeah. oh my goodness, the um Infinity Gauntlet is the, the glove yes. and the <laughs> 
So now that's how you can remember. We've got the Infinity Gauntlet, and if it doesn't have <laughs> the the glove part, uh, it's called uh-huh. a bracer. Yes, perfect. Oh god, I learn new things myself, so that's perfect. <laughs> Okay, so again, like you said, right, once you add in something and then in order to make sure that it looks like a 3D, always make sure that you add in shadows and everything so that it doesn't look flat. So what I added was like a shadow right underneath here. Uh, and also I need to make sure that I add a bit more here because so that it looks like belt or uh, mm. there's some sort of, if you look at my jacket, you can actually see the black line over here. So I'm trying to recreate that. Excellent. It's right and at the edge. Do... We do have 10 minutes to go, I will say, so... Okay. Yeah, all good. I'm on track. Excellent. I have no doubt about that. (laughs) (laughs) So I am also going to create one uh, for his other hand. We could just copy-paste whatever we have created. Mm. uh, And then make sure we darken it because... Uh, is at the back of that hand. Uh, always be mindful of what you're trying to create. Um, make sure you drag this right below here. And then uh, we're going to use factor. There you go. Put it back here. Back. I think this okay, is a perfect. great example also of how important it is to especially when you're creating work like this to name your layers and to keep them organized because with all these yeah. various levels of shadows highlights and and assets it can get a little messy yep uh that's the reason why what i do is that i like to group them together so that i know okay i'm working on a strap you know i know there are times i work on like a thousand layers or whatever not but i do group them as one so that i know okay it will be in this particular uh layer so yeah <laughs> So I'm start adding shadows here on the side here. Okay, there you go. Um, I think there's time to add in uh one more stuff, which would be the um uh, the top part here, uh the yeah. arms cloth. So I think we have time for that. I'm gonna just call it, uh arm cloth very quickly and create a new layer. And now, of course, like how we create the uh, baseless thing, and we're gonna just add in the shape like this, like this. Uh, so it's rounded here, so that he's wearing a jacket. So I need to make sure that I do that. Mm-hmm. And then again, just me roughly creating the, and then it goes in like this. Okay, that's perfect. And I am going to just make sure that it's in white. And then I'm going to just drag the arm cloth right at the bottom of the strap here so that it looks like it's inside yeah, of it. Yeah, tucked in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, erase stuff that you don't want. Like, for example, if I want something like this, um, there's some extra stuff here. So just erase it. Okay, cool. Um, you know, at times when you create polygonal lasso, because it has a sharp edge, so what you do is you just do a refining like this. Just erase the sharp corners here. So that it looks more smooth here. Before you adding in the the cloth material. Okay, that's perfect. And I think we can add in the arm part, which is this. Aha. <laughs> yeah. So I am going to steal this part of the cloth. Yeah, long long term loan. <laughs> Copy that. Paste it on top. Uh, you can make it a smart object in case you want to do a lot of alteration. Make sure you don't lose the quality. <laughs> and then I'm gonna bring in this here, so you 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 can see how the texture you know makes a realistic looking um mm. thing. And here you go, like that. I kind of like that. Excellent. And and just noting as well, like it's you don't just sample um I mean you wouldn't like sample from the center of the shirt or you know the down the left side. Like the important thing is also to if you're sampling from a different uh image to try to correspond to where it is actually gonna be on your character. 
um, to just make it a little bit easier for you as well. Exactly. And then I'm going to just change to black. Uh, again, I changed to overlay because I want to have a darkened shadow here. Mm -hmm. Like this. Uh, because his face is blocking this part of the arm, so I'll make that black a bit. Okay. If you notice, I didn't color front part because, again, knowing that, you know, at the end of my manipulation, there will be a light source here. So I'm going to save time just touching up the part that I really want. And then uh, we can change to multiply. And we have a, more of a wonderful uh, comment from uh, Fariz here. Hi, could you let Rames, uh, Ramesh know that <laughs> his team sends him lots of love and the biggest hug? Is it Thank you, Fariz. <laughs> That's my my colleagues, my friendly ever colleagues. Fantastic. We love to see it. And then this. Okay, that's perfect. I'm gonna just stop here before I'm adding in the jacket, which you're gonna reserve for next week. Exciting, exciting. Um well we do actually have um I'd say about eight minutes. So if there's anything else you want to uh, show us today um, on uh, Simon, sure. I think we, we have a little bit more time. Okay, perfect. Uh, what we can do is, uh, I'm going to just refine. Okay, so that's that. I think I can still add in one then. Let's bring in the device that I was talking about. And we're going to place it right below the Simon. Okay, so it looks like... Uh, Oh, where is it? Okay, it's here. So I'm just looking for it. Uh, give me a second. Because steampunk has a lot of a uh, different. Um, I mean, if you look at steampunk, they use a lot of like a mechanical stuff, which I'm mm. trying to uh, find, which is equivalent to this over here. But like you said previously, right? Uh, scale is super important. Even though this is huge, oh, wow. but I just paste it over here. <laughs> I am going to just reduce the size so that it looks like a very small looking device, right? So again, I'm going to just scale this down very quickly. And then I am going to just use select subject very quickly to remove the white background. It's I mean, a that... huge file. Yeah. Yeah. But that tool alone of just with a couple of clicks being able to, uh, to yeah, out your it's, asset, that's it's incredible. really magical. It's yeah. magical. Okay, that's that. Um, he's looking at that thing over there. Uh, I'm going to just uh, move it at the side. And if you notice, there's also a piece at the bottom. I'm going to just remove that very quickly. We don't need that. There you go. Um, Done. Um, so this is the device that he's looking at and there will be something coming up from this which will be a special effect thing that will happen next week. Ooh. So always leave something special <laughs> so that you guys can come back and have a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and and that is again on, on Thursday. So this week, um, same time and uh, same place. Device that's done. Um, so quickly, let's look at uh, stuff that we have done so far, right? So if you added the strap, I'm gonna keep re removing stuff so, it, so that you guys know how far we have come within like 20, 30 minutes, right? There you go, cap. We added the shadows at the bottom. The boy himself, we added like shadows on top of him as well. We re we added darkness so to make sure that you know it looks realistic. We added shadow underneath this rock so they give a realistic look. That's within 30 minutes. So imagine how what you can do in two hours. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That and I'm going to keep adding stuff so that you guys can see. There you go, there you go, and there you go. Amazing. That is and again, really end of the day, cool. we are going to achieve this, which we're going to see next week. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, how about you let the good people know? I have sent the links in the chat, but if you want to remind everyone of where they can see more of your work or just see more of you and the stuff that you do uh, in general online. Thank you. Um, so 
again thank you so much for tuning in for today uh more fun stuff next week if you guys want to check out my work um again all my work mainly are on instagram um and i do tweet uh like inspirational um what do you call like a quote on insta uh, twitter and then if you want to follow my uh youtube you can too i do have a couple of tutorials but yeah so do check them out uh you have any questions send me a direct message we'll see you again next week hey no this week this day <laughs> yes this week on thursday so uh same place same time uh for just under an hour we'll be continuing this piece we'll be adding some special effects i don't even know what they are i'm very very excited <laughs> um so thank you so much everyone for joining us today um and thank you very much for also joining us of course <laughs> today and i can't wait to see what we get up to on thursday catch you later everyone bye